Hello, thank you for joining us here at House of Power Outreach on our online service. I'm Pastor Tori, Pastor Eden, our senior pastor of our church, and we're so thankful and grateful to have you here with us. Let's pray and enter into the Word of God. Heavenly Father, we just praise you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your will. We thank you, Lord God, that I decrease and you increase. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God has to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's get excited about today's message and just the fact that, man, God is always more than enough. A little bit of God is greater than the greatest army of the enemy. And, and when you just just holding what you got... And, and walking in that, man, God's going to do great things. That's what we'll talk about today. Uh, all I got is a little bit of oil, and it is more than enough. It's just all I got is a little bit of oil. You may be down to your last drop of faith, your last drop of hope, your last drop, last drop of belief, and that's plenty, as we'll see here when Elijah come up on this lady. In 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 11 through 16, it says, And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her, and said, bring me, a, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal and a barrel and a little oil and a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first and bring it unto me. And after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil, until the day, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of, of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Man, just listen to these words from the from the prophet of God and, and this woman, you know, struggling. She says, man, I don't have anything. I'm going to make cake. And then me and my son, we're going to eat it and we're going to die. You know, there's the we can see the mental anguish. We can see the the emotional struggle and strains. And, and you know, if we want to call it in today's terms, the mental health of feeling defeated. This is it. We're dying. I'm going to make, I'm going to make my last meal. Well, there's something about knowing somebody who knows about God's meal and knows about the plan of God and, and what boldness that it took and what, what knowing the voice of God it took for Elijah to even request from this woman, hey, look, I know you're saying what you have is just enough to make for you and your son, but go make something, make it for me first. Do, listen, doing for God will never leave us with less than. You know, it's like, you know, you're sitting there and, you know, we've been in times where God has asked us to do something and financially use it that way. Financially, God, this is, this is all I got. This, that's all I asked for. And and we're sewing it in there because, again, the mentality was, yeah, I'm going to use this to try to get through the week. I don't even know if I'll get through the week. I'm going to figure out how to just stay. And God says, go ahead and sew it and I'll, I'll do the rest. And, and when we learn to trust God in such a way, in such a manner, it is such a powerful thing. So it, maybe you're down, like again, like I said before, you may be down to your last peace of mind, you know, whatever. You just hear just a little bit of what God has done, just a little bit, just a little touch from heaven. And man, then you take off with that, just a little bit of oil. And we understand what the oil represents, being anointed by the oil, the oil of, of, of God and, and having it poured upon you and you just have a little bit things may not be going well but you got a little bit of oil left and and here is the power of a little bit of oil uh is is uh is what i believe led the woman to be obedient to help the prophet of god you know when everything's going on oh, crazy i do know this one thing I know I need to trust God. I know trusting God. I cannot go wrong by trusting God. I know that. I know that. So God, I hear it is. I'm going to give it all to you. I got a little bit of oil. I got a little bit in me. I still got a little bit of belief in me. I still got a little bit of obedience to me. I still got a little bit of worship in me. I still got a little bit of oil that I can take and, and give it and honor God with it and obey God with it. I still got my voice. I can speak. I still got my eyes. I can read the word. I still got my ears. I can listen to worship. I still got my mouth, my tongue. I can speak the word. I still got a little bit and a little bit 
will do great, great miracles and wonders under the hand of God. And so one of the Hebrew definitions for oil is richness. And, and the oil of the Lord makes us richer in every situation. So the, the anointing, just a little bit, is, is we're richer than anything around us with that anointing. I, I just got a little bit of oil. And there are times I, I think, and all of us included, me included, that I pray. And I was like, I wanted this big grand thing. But God said, did I leave you with a little? Did I leave you with something? Then you're rich. Then you're richer than what everything around you. you you've got plenty. And so we began to run with that. The oil represents the will of God. And the most dangerous place on earth is outside the will of God. And the most protected place on earth is inside the will of God. So the will of God lines up with the word of God. And this is where, you know, we, we God has given us the straightest ruler possible, which was his word. Well, how do I line up with his will? You line up with his word. And when we line up with his word, that's it. Anything we put in front of of, of us and before God becomes an opposition to God, becomes an enemy to God, and God begins to take that thing down. And this is why it's imperative in everything that we do. It, are we doing it according to the word of God? Is it what God would do? Is it what God would want? And so we got to put this, put ourselves in that position. And it's hard to speak against something that we've, speak against a sin that we've signed off on in other areas of our life. You know, then we got to go back and go, hey, wait a minute, this is not what the Bible says. And so then you understand that there's a draining that begins to happen. But no matter how rough things get, no matter how draining things get, oil cannot be completely wiped out and deplenished uh, in, that, in, in that area. So you can come back and go, I got a little bit of oil. I can do something with this. I can do something with my faith. I still remember the sermon. I still remember the word spoken over me. I still remember the prophecy. I, I got a little bit of oil. I still remember that one worship song. I, I got a little bit of oil. And you, and you keep rolling with God with that. So it, it, is, it is the power of God. If we only knew how many people are living off our little bit of oil, we would praise God for who he is in our life. And that. Like, man, you know, drop the mic, shut it down. Man, if you knew that little bit of oil, that thing, that little bit that makes you pray, that makes you call out the, the family, friends, my name, that little bit of peace, that little whisper prayer when you're too frustrated and tired to pray. If you only knew how many people are staying alive, how many miracles that little bit of oil has produced. Like, this is, that's the part I want us to see. That's the part I want us to see that when you came to Christ, so much came to you that even on your weakest day, that's why the Bible say, let the weak say I'm strong. Because that little bit in you, that corner of oil in you is doing damage to the kingdom of hell. And it's, it's placing that. And so we even see this in Matthew 25. It's about the 10 virgins. And, you know, the way the, 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 uh, the customs were was the, the father and the son would go off and the bride would wait and stay prepared for the bridegroom to come. It's, a, it's a, a symbolic of what Jesus is doing when he comes back for us. He went to go be with the Father to come back for us, his bride. And, and he comes back. And, and so the, the, whenever the house is done, the, 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 the groom just comes back into the middle of the night and he blows his horn. Well, the, all the brides in that place who are waiting for their, her, their groom to come back trims their lamps and turns their light on so they can get to get their other things and head out to meet their groom. Well, five of them had wasted their oil and could not turn the light on. And then they start asking to borrow from the ones who did obey and keep their oil. And they say, no, because there won't be enough for me. Listen, you can, you can, your mercy can rob you, having too much of it, it can rob you of your obedience to God. And that, that's, again, when there's times you cannot carry somebody else in, in, in a place. And what I mean by that is they're dis, you can't jump in front of the consequences of their disobedience. Let me say it that way. And we have to be in that place. But they said, we can't help you. So here it is. Keep your oil and the lamp's going to come on. It's going to come on. I've been waiting all this time. How long I got? But you got a little bit of oil. It's going to keep you going. I've been, I've been going through this. So it, it, you keep your oil. You keep your lamps. And those who don't will miss out. We'll miss out. You keep letting the oil go. Keep letting it go. And you're not going to be able to turn your light on. You're not going to be able to, to, to see what's out there and see when your blessings are coming. The widow's little bit of oil became greater in her joy to serve God with, with all she had. So, again, we can go like, man, I still don't have more than what I thought I should have and all that. 
But if you would just take what you have to have some joy in serving God with it, God will turn it around. God will grow it. God will make it increase. He will do that. And so in Isaiah chapter 61 and verses 1 through 3, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening up of the prisons to them that are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. It's a uh, amazing thing about this. And, and then you go back in Luke 4, 18, this is when Jesus stood up as a 12 year old boy in the synagogue and wrote these and read these words, finding these words, finding himself in the scriptures, which I think is all a whole nother sermon about the power of finding yourself in the scriptures. And he read them and then he sat down. As we serve God, we must do it with joy, right? Do it with joy. <laughs> Listen, it, if willing and obedient, be willing to obey, be willing to obey, uh, and, and, and not because it is always fun, but the oil of joy will bring healing to every, everyone around us. It is that about that oil, uh, that's on us, that's such when at our church, we recently, uh, prayed over everyone, you know, just did what the shepherds would do with the sheep because the sheeps would be bothered by flies to the point that they would do whatever they could to get rid of the flies. And they'd be banging their heads into trees and things until they knocked themselves out and basically killed themselves. So what they, what the shepherd would do was he would cover them. He would smother them with oil and those flies could no longer, could no longer torment them. Now flies are a representation of demonic attacks. And so, listen, listen, go get your oil, man. You can't get your thoughts straight. You've been uh, attacked by thoughts of, 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 of not feeling worthwhile and feeling like you want to just give up on life and give up on... Go get your oil. Go cover yourself in oil. Go cover your children in oil. They're hearing things in their heads and all. Cover them with oil. Don't let them go out like that. And you cover them. We did it to the whole church. We prayed over the whole church. And it began to see that. Well, we do that... Uh, it is the Bible says in Isaiah 118, if you be willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. You willfully obey, you eat the good of the land. A merry heart does good, does us good like a medicine. And if we don't have anything else, we can always have joy in the Lord. We can always have joy. Well, I didn't get the, the car when I didn't get the, but do you have joy? You got joy in the Lord. The joy is joy of the Lord. That's Nehemiah 8.10. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So how powerful, like if you're feeling weak, that means you're missing out on joy. You just go get your joy. Go go restore yourself in the joy of the word of God and, and the joy of, of the peace of God. That's your strength. What, what the enemy loves to bring on attacks, because again, if he can get a hold of your emotional well-being, if he can get your countenance turned down like he did with Cain, you'll start to think it's over. This is done. No. And God said, go get your joy. The problems of this world can be overwhelming to the people of God, but they could walk in joy because God was doing a great work. It could have been overwhelming. But they started walking in joy because they know God's going to do a work. God's going to have the final say. No matter what, God's got the ending covered. He right? Uh, Jeremiah 20, 29, 11. I know the thoughts I have of you, thoughts of good and not evil, so that you have an expected end. I know the ending. I ain't worried about this chapter. I'm, I'm, I got a relationship with the author. I know how the book goes. I know how it's going to turn out for me. And so it's a great work that God has done. Our emotions are not beyond our control. We can do God's will, even when we don't feel like it. It is no longer fake it till you make it. We say will it till you feel it. Do the will of God and you'll feel it. You'll feel it. Just keep walking in God's will. Keep walking in God's ways. John 16, 33 says, in this world, we're going to have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. That I've overcome the world is my little bit of oil that I've overcome. I got a little bit in me. I that I know I've been fussing and fighting all day, but I st 
still got a little bit of word remaining in me. I still got a little bit of peace and right, and and that's the one that's gonna flow and make a big difference in the world and in, in everything that you do. So, be of good cheer. God has overcome the world. Joy to the world. The Lord has come, and the joy to the world is the same joy we can have while we're in the world. We, we know it's. We know we're getting close, but it's not Christmas yet, but it's always Christmas in us because we got Christ in us. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. If I can look at all my situations, one thing I can point to, the Lord has come. The Lord has come. Joy to the world, joy to my world. The Lord has won and I, has come and, and I have, and he's won, by the way. And so I'm going to, I'm going to walk in that because again, when I begin to be saturated by the joy of the Lord and what God has come to do and save me, then I turn, then I go and just walk in that faith and belief and hope in God and, and know that he is the one. In second Corinthians chapter 10 verses three through five. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And so we don't fight like the world fights. Someone wants to get into a shouting and soldier match. Don't don't even do that with them. Are you? Don't even do that with them. Just peace be with you. I love you. I pray for you, and that's it. Do not fight like they fight. You fight differently. You just fight with calm and peaceful, and and you walk off because you know God's got it. God is going to be the one that settles it. You ain't got to you ain't got to settle no argument. You ain't got to settle no fight. The, the victory is mine when the battle is the Lord's. So let people go wild. Let them just go berserk. You don't fight that way. You fight in prayer. You believe in God. This is how you fight your battles with your hands together, your eyes closed, and you in that relationship and fellowship with Lord God Almighty. But it says about our thought life, right? Casting down every evil imagination, everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So I love that. Bringing into captivity every, every thought to the obedience of Christ. Whatever I'm thinking, I'm going to bring it to the point Till, until it obeys God. Think until our thoughts are obedient to God. Think until they are obedient. That's where we're headed. I want to think until I'm obedient. My thoughts are obedient. Think until my mind, till the mind of Christ becomes our first way of thinking. That's where it is. Like I'm bringing into captivity every thought until the obedience of God. I'm not. I'm not gonna let my mind just run wild. I'm gonna bring you. I'm gonna grab you. I'm gonna capture. I'm gonna bring you in. I'm gonna bring you. If I'm feeling a bitterness towards someone or, or uh, unforgiveness, I'm bringing that thought into captivity until I have obeyed God and forgiven that person. Until I've obeyed God and released that person. I am not let. I'm bringing the thoughts into the obedience. And so many times that's just we kind of. A wave at that scripture and say, okay, I cast down every message, everything, and then, you know, we just kind of wave it. No, you keep, you keep, you bring it into captivity till it's captured long enough to think like God. It's almost like you're putting it in rehab so and, and, and bringing it under the word of God until it comes out washed with the word of God, according to John 15, 3, that you all have already been washed in the washing of the water of the word. Uh, and so we bring those thoughts in Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added. Well, then everything has to be sought by God. What we think about, what we, what we dwell on needs to be brought to God first. Seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added in our thought life. And, and so we have to see the king in our life and our thought life and everything else will be added. We don't, we don't think like we're peasants. We think like we're kings. Because we, we, Jesus is the king of kings. We think like kings, royalty. Proverbs 23 and verse 7 says, As a man thinks, so is he. Way the, what you think about is what you are. So again, we come back. We got this woman who says, I only got a little bit of oil. However, that ain't the way I think about it. I tell you what all I can do with this little bit of oil. But my obedience to God says, Okay, let me go make this for you. And then watch God 
pour out and pour out and pour out and pour out. So when we got to we got to look at the fact that maybe what's blocking the outpouring is how we're thinking and what we're thinking about and what we're dwelling on and and we can't afford to let that block it. As a man thinks in his heart is what he really is and being mindful of God's word strengthen us to walk like Christ. Well, I want to be like Christ. I have the mind of Christ and I have the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ was never without. If I have it, that means if it's not big enough to meet my need, that means it's a seed. I need to sow it. And then I need to sow it joyfully. God loves a cheerful giver. I need to do joyfully give it, joyfully sow, joyfully reach out and, and put, put, our, put our hearts in where God has called us to. Think on things that are lovely, just and of a good report. Think on those things. So the devil knows he cannot get us. He cannot get us to, to not believe that God and God's existence. He knows we're, we're solid in that and God's existence. So what he goes after is our knowledge in the things of God by getting into our thought life. So we see, well, you, I know you won't deny God, but I want, I want to hinder you from having knowledge of the will of God and having knowledge of what God will do for you. So I want to attack that knowledge part of it. So then when you hit these rock bottom moments with just a little bit of oil, you're going to go back to, okay, I'm not going to acknowledge what God can do because I'm not fully in knowledge of what God can do. So I'm going to act on my own behalf. And what God is saying is think on these things that are lovely, just enough, a good report. Whatever little bit I got, devil, it all came from God. And that's all I'm so that's all that's the only one I'm going back to with it. And so we begin to restore that hope in God. This is how people say they believe in God, but they don't obey his word because they'll have a form of God godliness, but they'll deny the power. They have the Bible. They know God exists, but they, you will see them. They would pick. They'd rather be right in their own minds than righteous in the word of God. They will literally, they're literally, and we've seen this where people literally go against what the Bible said, clearly what the Bible says, so that they can do what they want to do in circumstance. Please don't be that person. Please don't be that person. Or the, the little bit of oil will be too little. It'll be too little because you don't know how to serve God with it. Uh, and so we want to make sure that we are serving God with our whole heart at all time. Uh, our little bit of oil can anoint our life to restoration. Don't despise the day of small beginnings. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for every believer out there just now realizing how much that little bit of faith they had and how much it was taking care of the whole family. People have been survived. There are going to be miracle stories they're going to hear about later on from people being survived. Somebody must have been prayed. It was the little oil person. That, that must have been the prayer person. So, Father, we thank you. We're going to carry all that we have to you. And let you, Father, be glorified in all that we do. And we believe for great turnaround and great abundance. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.